A red sun rises over Goose Bay, Newfoundland. The world's biggest aircraft is refueling on the tarmac, on its way from Berlin to Edmonton with a single piece of cargo, a 151-tonne heat boiler. The only plane capable of lifting such a heavy object is the Antonov AN-225, Mriya. As six turbofan jet engines begin to spin, a deafening hum fills the air. Technicians make their last checks on the massive cargo and pilots prepare for takeoff. The air catches the wings and the giant takes to the skies. The AN-225 is unmatched and unrivaled, a heavyweight in the heavy lift sector. More than a quarter of a century has passed since the maiden flight of the AN-225. Since then, the legendary cargo aircraft has broken hundreds of world records and transported some of the largest loads known to man across the globe. Over a quarter of a century in operation, it has moved more than 21,000 tonnes worth of the widest varieties of cargoes imaginable, from machines and parts to even animals. Well, no larger planes have been created so far. That's it. I think it's rather expensive to create such a plane. And one needs sufficient experience with large planes, because it's not an easy task. It is part of the tester's work. But if you are scared, this means this is not your profession. Our planes have such characteristics and opportunities that they can be marketed throughout the world. The boundaries of Ukraine and even of the former Soviet Union are too narrow for them. Kiev, the great city on the Dnieper River, is the capital of Ukraine, which stretches from the frontiers of Poland and Hungary to Russia and the Black Sea. Until independence in 1991, Ukraine was part first of Russia, then of the Soviet Union. It was here that after World War II, the Soviet government decided to locate one of its prime strategic industries, cargo planes. The Russians were the first to experiment long distance flight using giant planes, such as this Tupolev Ant-20 a record-breaking aircraft powered by no less than seven engines. The Germans developed a powered glider for heavy transport duties during World War II, the Messerschmitt 323 Gigant, or Giant. The world was getting used to mega planes well before the Antonov Design Bureau was founded. The Antonov Design Bureau was built around one of Russia's foremost aircraft designers, Alyek Antonov. The state owned everything, however. So when Alyek Antonov pioneered record-breaking aircraft in the 1960s, he continued to be just an aircraft designer. His team grew and eventually was able to control production of the aircraft in its own factories. Maria started with Ruslan, the AN-124 plane. It was a plane designed by Ole Kostyanovich Antonov. AN-124, Rusland, and the idea that gave rise to our dream also belonged to Antonov. Everything changed as the world was changing. In Soviet times, we were dealing with aviation tasks, which were financed entirely by the state. The planning was centralized. The government gave us tasks telling us what to do. It provided funds, and this is how the planes were constructed. During the Cold War years, the Antonov Design Bureau came up with solutions to Russia's pressing need to transport troops and weapons long distances at high speed. While the USA was producing the Lockheed C-130 Hercules, 
Antonov designed and built the AN-22, a long-distance transport plane that was the largest of its kind on the market at the time. The world was already full of large aircraft. American millionaire and pilot Howard Hughes paid for the largest flying boat ever built, which still holds the record for the widest wingspan, the Spruce Goose. It flew only once. Boeing converted its war productions into building civilian planes and the largest airliner of the time, the Boeing 747. The 747 took to the air in 1970, while the US Air Force ordered a number of large planes to transport military equipment halfway around the world, such as the C-5 Galaxy. There seemed no limit to the size of the plane, as long as it had enough power and enough lift in the wings. Over the years, Antonov adopted the jet engine and built faster and larger planes for the Soviet military and tested new concepts, such as the AN-72, with its overwing engines that increase lift. However, when the US Air Force began deploying its long-distance C-5 Galaxy transports, Antonov and the Soviet Union realized that in case of war, they would have to move just as much military material as far and as fast. Design of the then largest transport aircraft in the world began, the AN-124 Ruslan, or, as NATO knew it, the Cossack. It flew for the first time in December 1982. The 1980s were marked by increased rivalry between the USA and Russia in space, too. NASA's Space Shuttle not only carried out experiments in space, but also contributed to the USA's Strategic Defense Initiative, a wall of anti-missile technologies that, it was claimed, took the teeth out of the Soviet threat. In an arms race that eventually broke the back of the Soviet economy, the Russian Space Shuttle, baptized the Buran, played a key role. Built in 1988, when Ukraine was still a part of the Soviet Union, the AN-225 aircraft still operates from the original site of the Antonov factory and headquarters, here outside Kiev. Only 25 years ago, the city was a major industrial center in the Soviet Union. Here, Soviet engineers of the Antonov Design Bureau put together the largest military cargo plane of the time, the AN-124 Ruslan and then were ordered to adapt it to carry the Soviet Union's own space shuttle, the Buran. After the end of World War II, the USA and the Soviet Union vied to break records in space. Although the Russians were the first to successfully send a satellite, then a cosmonaut, into space, the Americans put a man on the moon and advanced space technology through a strategic defense initiative, dubbed Star Wars, which included massive funding for NASA's space shuttle program. Russia, meanwhile, used the space race to develop its first intercontinental ballistic missiles. The Russian space shuttle flew its first and only space flight on the 15th of November 1988. But just as the Americans used a jumbo jet to carry theirs, the Soviets too needed a big plane to carry Buran. They asked Antonov for a solution. The result was this. In the AN-225 plane called Maria Dream, we used Ruslan's wings and the body, in fact, the larger part of the center body from Ruslan and the chassis, but we added some changes. In order to save design time, the Antonov Bureau began using their then largest plane as a base. A twin tail to make space for the Buran, more engines for more power, larger wings for more lift, and a massive cargo hold to be able to carry the space shuttle's ancillary equipment.
objects as large as 11 meters in diameter and 76 meters long can fit inside. But with a payload of 250 metric tons, it could also carry things on its back, which is what it is designed for. The AN-124 Ruslan morphed into something quite different, but clearly related. The Mriya, or Dream. The changes were quite significant. They included an additional center part of the wing and the additional engines, because there were four there and six here. And the rear loading hatch was closed in Miria. In, in other words, these were in fact the main parameters.